Welcome back. Now, a little bit of history before we get into our first major discussion for today. I'm going back to 2015. I'm just going to very brief at this one. Um, it was on this day that a 13-member uh, panel was set up by the current administration uh, to investigate uh, arms spending by the past governments of uh, uh, from President Goodluck Jonathan and Umaru Musa Yaradwa. It created a little bit of controversy uh, with many people thinking that it was a political witch hunt and, and whatnot. But the current administration and of course spokesperson Femi Adishina uh, back then, you know, was quick to say that this wasn't, you know, a witch hunt and it was simply just looking into the spending of the, uh, the uh, former government in Nigeria to see how funds were mismanaged with regard to security and, you know, um, you know, we failed to defeat um, insurgency and terrorism and, and all whatnot, you know, back then. Um, and then there was also people who said that, you know, it was also the responsibility of former President Gulag Jonathan and Umar Musi Yaradwa to investigate the spending in security in governments before them. And if they failed to do that, then, you know, that's uh, for them. And this were just the political, um, you know, statements that, you know, came up uh, with regards to the story. Um, this happened in August, and if you, of course, remember, it was headed by uh, NSA, Major General Baba Gana Munguno, retired. Later that year, also in 2015, in November, the president then gave uh, the order for the ex-NSA, Samuda Suki, to be arrested for $2.2 billion uh, um, arms uh, fraud. Um, but it, it all started on this day, um, eventually leading up to... Um, um, Sam Adasuke being arrested, and of course we all remember how that played out. Yes, um, really, this this day was a very politically charged day in Nigeria back in 2015 when this this news broke broke out regarding this investigative panel. You know, the corruption thing is this something that would ever end in the country? I I really I really don't have an answer for that. But when we move further into what happened today in history in the year 2001, and we cast our minds back to Aliyah, she was a very big star back then, done lots of you know, hit singles. People really loved her. She was really young. And it was just unfortunate that it was in this day in history and that she died at the age of 22. Um, she was flying to um, film a shoot for her music video when you know, this air crash occurred. And the funny thing is, you know, after this event, you know, friends of hers granted an interview and one of them said that they had actually even warned her that she shouldn't even go ahead, you know, with the shoot at that particular location and that she even had doubts with that particular aircraft saying that um, she felt that the aircraft wasn't safe enough and that the pilot at the end of the day was discovered that the pilot didn't even have a license to fly that plane. But it was on this day in history, sadly, that she lost her life as well as nine other crew members that were on board um, that plane shortly after it took off um, from the Marsh Harbour Airport in Bahamas. Yeah, really sad. Um, so we can quickly wrap up. You know, one of the things that I heard lately about Ali, um, not about her death now, but it was uh, with regards to the R. Kelly trial. That they were where, married? Um, yeah, they were not, like, not the part that they were married. The fact that um, they had made a fake ID for Ali to get married at the age of 15. Um, and so R. Kelly, who was, I think, 21 or 22 at that, uh, well, in his 20s at that time, um, went on to make a fake you know, ID card um, for, I think he was even more than his 20s, for a 15-year-old girl um, and, you know, eventually got married to her. And it's one of the things that I, I remember, one of the last things that I remember about her um, that I've uh, had to uh, read about in the last uh, couple of uh, weeks. Exactly. You know, really opening a kind of worms, the Eric Kelly trial regarding, yeah. you know, all the sexual assault allegations against him. Pedophilia. <laughs> All right, stay with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're having um, a PRO of uh, Association of Licensed Private Security uh, Practitioners of Nigeria and a military veteran, Roy Okidevia, joining us this morning to discuss security challenges in Nigeria and, of course, the attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy yesterday in Kaduna. We'll be back after the short break.